e poi quando mi passate ok good good morning good morning well actually good afternoon everyone and welcome to this webinar from the european environment bureau my name is david sabadini i'm working at the, the climate office as a senior policy officer here in brussels for the eb and thanks for being with us in this call uh, today we're going to have a deep dive on um on a measure that has been uh, not spoken of enough, we believe, at European level. We have some 60 registered people in, in the room. Uh, I know that the room is now filling up quickly. Sorry for the delay. We had some technical difficulties and apologies for that. And um, so today we're going to discuss the super bonus, the Italian super bonus, which is a, a very peculiar uh, and very effective to some extent um, a measure to um, foster energy efficiency and renewable energies, particularly in, in heating and cooling. And uh, we have asked two uh, experts to join us today to kind of go in depth in this specific measure. And there will be, of course, um, a question and answer, an answers session afterwards. So you can, you'll be able to ask uh, questions to these two experts. The first of these experts is uh, Elena Legrini. She's an uh, environmental engineer. She works at Enea. Enea is the Italian Energy uh, uh, Agency, National Energy Agen Agency, who is, uh, which is in charge of uh, the technical uh, implementation of these measures. So Miss um, Allegrini will not deal with the, all the political stuff around the, and the debate around this uh, specific um, uh, measures, but rather will tell us what this measure is about, how the, it works, how it's been implemented, what are the results results of these measures, whether it is successful or not, what is working very well, but it's maybe working a little bit less well, but I mean, what is what has been the reply of the, the answer of, uh, of the consumers to these specific measures, and how this measure is framed in a more general, general uh, poly, um, framework of policies that you have, and we have in Italy, well, you have in Italy, uh, now I say we because I'm Italian as well, but I mean, you, uh, in this case, I have in Rome, in, in terms of um, promotion of renewables and the and energy efficiency at domestic level, but not only, not only at domestic level. And following her intervention, we will have Matteo Leonardi, who is a co-founder of ECO. ECO is an Italian independent think tank uh, that's working on climate. That's been there for at least a couple of years and is um, following very closely this kind of policies. Matteo will give us uh, uh, a point, the point of view of a uh, civil society organization, so from a think tank, not not an institutional one on this specific uh, um, uh, measures. We uh, particularly ask Matteo also to have uh, uh, to, to to take a deep dive on what has worked the best and what has worked the least on this specific measure. Now, just a few words on why we are interested in this specific measure, um, because the, the angle we're going to, to take today is, is this a measure that can be of inspiration to other countries other than Italy? There's been a lot of talk about the fact of this measure being very expensive uh, because among all things, this measure can go to uh, co can cover uh, the full cost of, of the up, the full upfront cost of any measure that has been uh, uh, in any in renovation uh, when it comes to heating and cooling that you can might think of uh, uh, in your home or your office. And um, and it's got a very interesting uh, other other interesting um, uh, characteristics, which are, uh, for instance, the fact that uh, it speaks to all citizens, uh, uh, regardless of their incomes. That means uh, that also those who are in the no tax area that don't have any uh, fiscal capacity are also able to take profit from this uh, measure. And uh, this measure uh, didn't say in the beginning, but it works on tax deduction so basically it takes you know shortens your taxes tax um um, a payment in in ten years, but it can also can become a discount in upfront cost, and it involves the banks. But it doesn't mean it, this doesn't mean that the, there's a creation of debt or a loan or a mortgage to to the uh, final use to, to the consumer. Uh, it involves the bank in a different way, and it covers both renewables and energy systems and he has renewables and heating systems and energy savings and it requires a certain amount of energy savings. And then it solves something that's really uh, very uh, unique. It solves the landlord tenant dilemma, which is a very big debate pretty much in every member state when it comes to these specific policies. So, I mean, these are a few of the, few of the characteristics of these specific um, 
with this specific policy that has been also um, discussed uh, in these weeks in Italy, and it's said to be one of the main uh, controversial arguments within the government. And so there's a lot of debate about this and uh, about when this is going to end. There's an official end, and I guess that uh, Ms. Allegrini will, will tell us about it. But there's also, there's, as usual, uh, there's, in this case in Italy, there's, there's, there are talks of uh, potential extensions extension and different forms and whatnot. So this is more or less the, the, what we're going to discuss in this hour. And uh, without further ado, uh, well, actually, I remind you to keep, uh, to keep your microphone muted, of course, and, and, uh, and to use the question and answer um, uh, dialogue to, to um, ask questions. And um, I see there's someone already asking questions, but I mean, we'll keep it for, for the, the end uh, of the session. And without further ado, I leave the floor to Ms. Allegrini. Ms. Allegrini, thanks for being with us. The floor is yours. Thank you. I think you can see the screen, please just. Yes, we can. Yes. Maybe you should be going full screen. Yeah, great. Yeah, of course, of course. So uh, first of all, thank you. I would like to thank you EEP for the invitation for this opportunity. Uh, because it is a good chance for, for us, for, I mean, for the national agency and of course for our department to share what we collected in these last two years of experience. So I will talk about, as uh, we have already said, about the Italian super bonus 110%. So here's the table of contents. I will start talking about the state of the art of the building stock in the country, just to understand the reasons why we, we needed something like these measures and other fiscal mechanisms we have in the country. Then I will focus the attention on the overview about incentives for the building the renovation we have in our country. Then, of course, most of the attention will cover super bonus 110% in terms of three main topics deadlines. So end of the measures, technical requirements, because of course the agency focuses the attention on technical requirements. And I will give some uh, quick examples on let's say technical requirements as well and expenses limit. Then the last two points of the presentation, then I will talk about the annual report on energy efficiency, where we collect and show the results we reached in the previous year. And then of course, the national data we have on super bonus 110%. So let's move uh, right into the presentation. Let's start with the state of the art with, uh, about the building stock in the country. So we, as it is commonly known, um, building uh, are responsible for more than 40% of the energy consumption in Europe. If we focus attention on our country, just like this, I think it's better to see the screen. Sorry. Um, if we focus attention on our country in Italy, it can be seen that we have approximately 12 million of buildings, let's say of whose 15% were built at the beginning of the past century, I mean before 1918, and 65% were built before 1976 which is the year where the first law on energy efficiency came into force. This, um, this data, this result is extremely important, I'd say crucial, because it shows that most of the existing building stock in the country needs to be renovated. And in this scenario, mechanisms like um, super bonus or other fiscal schemes play an important, a key and fundamental role. Um, let's have a look a quick look at the energy performance certificates in Italy. Uh, of course, here um, in, the, in the slide, you have the reference to have further information about this topic. So we have two slides. One is about what we collected between 2016 up to 2019. And this is the annual report 2020. And then we have this the following year. Let's start with 2020. So if we focus the attention in the period between 2016 and 2019, it can be easily observed that more than one third of the existing buildings belong to the latter category of the Energy Performance Certificate, Class G, which means, of course, of course the least efficient solution and building. Then, if we move to the 
uh, annual report on energy um, performance of existing buildings in 2021, we show, we observe the same results. But in this case, we have, uh, we, we have, we, we found results um, according to the distribution on the climate zones. Actually, Italy uh, is divided into six different climatic zones from A to F, where A represents the hottest one and F represents the coldest one. So if we have a look into these graphs, it can be seen that most of the buildings belong to the um, coldest uh, climatic areas, which means E and D. And if we move to the other graph, it can be seen that most of, the, of these buildings belonging to the coldest areas of the country have the least efficient uh, in terms of energy performance certificates because most of them belong to plus G. So they actually need to be renovated. So this was the Italian scenario and gives and explains the reasons why we need fiscal mechanisms to renovate the country. But of course, as we already know, there are some, there are a lot of uh, European directives uh, in terms of incentives for building renovation. And of course, we need to implement it, this, these rules in Italy. So in order to improve energy efficiency in Europe, Article 7 of the so-called European Directive requires each member state to achieve yearly energy saving through two different, through, uh, through two different uh, measures energy efficiency obligation schemes, and of course, alternative measures. In this scenario, uh, we have um, implemented uh, uh, four uh, different supporting schemes, and we have the so-called bonus casa, the so-called eco bonus, the so-called bonus facciate, and in the end, super bonus 110%. Just keep in mind that we are talking about energy efficiency in buildings. So the topic of all these supporting schemes is buildings. Just a quick overview on the fiscal incentives. Let's start with Bonus Casa, which has got the lowest percentage in terms of tax relief. In this case, in this case the tax relief is equal to 50%. Here is the list of possible examples of actions that can benefit from Bonus Casa. So we have, of course, building renovation, passive acoustic requirements, anti-seismic actions, asbestos remediation, and of course, the use of renewable energy sources and actions addressed to energy saving. The national agency, ENEA, uh, concerns the latter list of action. So the use of renewable energy sources and of course, energy saving. Then we have EcoBonus. So here the percentage of tax relief varies depending on the type of action and we have a minimum value of 50% up to 85%. So actually we have several values, 50%, 65%, 70%, 75%, 80 and 85%. Uh, here in the box are, are some examples of possible actions. So we have of course cladding, replacement of existing windows, shadowing systems, replacement of heating plants, biomass, building automation, solar collectors, and intervention on multiple dwellings, which actually have the highest percentage in terms of tax relief, which means from 70 up to 85%. Then we have something quite new, I'd say, which is bonus facciate. In this case, we have two possibilities for the tax relief, 60 or 90%. 90% was the percentage of tax relief for the expensive in 2020 and 2021. 60% is the percentage of tax relief for the expenses in this year, 2022. So um, in this case, the scenario is smaller than the one we, we saw before. So it is meant for buildings in the so-called zone a and B for the municipalities. It concerns building facades which are visible from public streets. And we're talking about flooding, open, open closure paintings, and balcons. So we are, in Bonus Facciata, we are not talking about 
kit implants. Then, in the end, of course, we have super bonus 110%. Let's say, broadly speaking, and then in the next slide, we will understand the reason why I said broadly speaking. A uh, super bonus 110% is related to a strict number of specific words, uh, works which can be organized, distinguished in two categories, primary works and secondary works. Primary works concern thermal insulation for more than 25% of the external, external building enclosure. Then we have replacement of the existing heating equipment. Pay attention, we are talking about existing heating equipment. Then we have seismic structural actions, which of course are really important in a country like the one I'm living in. Then we have secondary works, which concern a large variety of actions. Let's say, for example, photovoltaic panels, double glazing, electric charges, and so on. What I would like to focus on in terms of super bonus 110% is the option that the consumer have in order to benefit the tax relief. Of course, we have the direct tax relief, then the so-called credit assignment and invoice discounting. Just to give an example of primary and secondary works, primary works, if we consider a multiple dwelling, we have works concerning the opaque enclosure and the replacement, for example, of the existing heating equipment for central systems. Then in some slides, we will understand why I'm talking about central system in this case. Then we have secondary works, for example, replacement of uh, existing windows, as we said, shadowing systems, uh, solar collectors, photovoltaic panels, and car chargers. So let's, let's go deeper into the measure and we focus the attention, we start focusing the attention on deadlines. As we um, mentioned, we have several intervention and we have several types of consumers. So if we think about multiple dwellings, they have a percentage of tax relief equal to 110% up to the end of 2023. Then for the expensive, uh, the expensive in 2024, the percentage decreases up to 70%. And then for the expenses in 2025, up to 65%. This is the reason why, why I said um, some slides ago, broadly speaking, 110%. As we can say, as we can see in this slide, we have a variety of percentage of tax relief. Then single dwellings. Here, um, the topic is quite um, controversial, even in these last weeks. Let's say that we have 110% until the end of September of this year, I mean 2022, and up to the end of this year, only if by the end of September we have completed, we will have completed 30% of the total project. Then we have public housing institutes. They have a different uh, deadline, which is the first semester of 2023, and then the end of 2023, only if they completed um, the 30% of the total project before the end of the previous semester. Then if we want to focus the attention on seismic wars, the percentage is always equal to 110% until the end of 2025. Um, so we are going deeper and deeper into the measure, and now we focus the attention on technical requirements and documents. Technical requirements, of course, we have to comply with the ministerial decree uh, which defines the access conditions, which vary, of course, depending on the type of intervention, flooding or, or end uh, heating plants. We have to ensure at least two building energy classes improvements. And we are always talking about heated spaces. So this is one of the most important requirements. All the flats need to be heated. And then, of course, we need to um, to have to produce some specific documents, energy performance before and after um, 110%, which of course concern the two 
uh, building energy classes improvement, insurance for the technician, invoices, bill of quantity and cost evaluation, municipality permissions, and some specific technical documents uh, that we have in, the, in our country to ensure that, of course, we respected the laws for the, the rational use of energy. Um, let's say a numerical example. We have the first case, which is a multiple dwelling with 10 apartments. Let's say some of the possible options we have. Of course, we can have thermal insulation, we more than 25%, and this is the primary work. Then we have replacement of existing heating plant, and this is a primary work when we are talking about central system. So expenses limit. In the first case, we have 40,000 multiplied per eight plus 30,000 multiplied per two. In the second case, I mean for the heating plant, we have 20,000 multiplied by eight and plus 15 multiplied by two. So we don't have to multiply for the total number, but we have to multiply per eight um, for the number 40 or 20,000 per eight, and then for the difference compared to eight. Then we have, for example, replacement of existing windows and roller shutters. In this case, because they are related to a single uh, apartment, a single flat, they are secondary work. In this case, the expense limit is equal to 54,545 euro. So in the end, the total amount of expenses limit in this case is the sum we have in the slide. So 380,000 uh, to share among the owners plus uh, 54,545 euro for each apartment plus the number in red, 190,000 to share among the owners. But this is for the heating plant in terms of central systems. Okay, let's move to another case. We're talking about multiple dwelling. Yes, with 10 apartments, we have the same list more or less of intervention, thermal insulation, primary work, replacement of existing window, secondary work. Then we have replacement of the existing heating plant. In this case, we have a single system, for example. Well, in this case, the single system, because it belongs to the private apartment, is considered as a secondary work. And in this case, the expense limit is equal to 27,270 euro. So if we compare uh, with the previous case, um, in the previous case, we had a total amount for the expense limit for the heating plants because it was a central system. Here we have a specific amount for each apartment. And if we want to, I see the combination with photovoltaic plants and storage, we have 48,000 for the photovoltaic plants and for the storage. Let's focus on heat pumps just to keep in mind the technical requirements. As we said, we have to comply with specific ministerial decree, which of course depends on the type of action, as we said, but also on when we started our project. So if we have a look at the coefficient of performance for the heat pump, and we consider, for example, air-air combination, actually the COP in 2010 and 2020 is the same, we have 3.9. But if we compare with the previous value we had, we had in the ministerial decree, it is equal to 3.8. So just keep in mind, for heat pumps, we have the same values actually, but for all other interventions, the flooding, for example, or replacement of existing windows, keep in mind that we have to change the ministerial decree depending on when we start the project. Um, we are close to the end, just, a quick, just some quick information about the data we collected in terms of energy efficiency and super bonus. Uh, every year, uh, our department, the National Agency for Energy Efficiency, publishes the so-called annual report concerning the total actions in terms of renovation projects and targets we reached the previous year, which means, for example, that the annual report 2021 concerned the goals and results achieved in 2020. If you want to find more information about this topic, here is the hyperlink where you can link, of course, and find more information. 
2022 is work in progress. It will be ready by the end of the year. Just some information about the cumulative data according to the Article 7 I previously mentioned when I talked about the European directives. As it can be seen, the alternative measures represent approximately 91% of the target according to Article 7. The alternative, me I'm talking about the alternative measure number two, which is related to fiscal incentives. Um, if we focus the attention in 2020 and we compare the several fiscal mechanisms, bonus casa, eco bonus, bonus facciata, and super bonus, it can be seen actually that the most important uh, um, value belongs to bonus casa with 60, more than 66%. Actually, bonus casa is the oldest mechanism, and this is the reason why um, they has got the most important impact because it is very well known by the consumers and, of course, by the companies. Super bonus has a very in this table has a very limited value, less than one percent. But we have to remember one important thing that we said at the beginning of the presentation uh, of the of this uh, section. Sorry. The annual report 2021 concerned the goals and the results we achieved in 2020. In two, at the end of 2020, the super bonus was less than one semester old. Let's say a bit, let's say four months old. So actually the number of interventions we collected at the end of 2020 was approximately 1,600 of intervention. And we will see in some slides what we have reached after, one, after um, two years. Just to give more numbers, let's say, uh, focusing on heat pumps, um, this is, these are, this information is taken from the annual report 2021. And this is the focus on heat pumps, a uh, super bonus at the end of September 2021. So if we consider, the, if we consider electric heat pumps electrically driven again, the, um, the number is of installation is more than 13,000. Um, if we focus on heat pumps in terms of gas solution, we have a very uh, limited number, 235. But just to focus the attention on the possible consumer in terms of heat pumps, more than 60% in both cases, I mean, electrically or gas driven, six, more than 60% is um, related with single dwelling interventions. So um, the national data on super bonus, what we collected until now. So here is the, the reference for the hyperlink when you can download the PDF file with all the information. The, uh, the text is written in Italian, unfortunately, but you can, I'm sure you can grasp the meaning of the most important features about the major. So what I would like to underline is the distribution of buildings. Until now, let's say they fit more than a bit less than 54% is related with single dwellings, 30% with independent dwelling, and 15% with multiple dwellings. This is just in terms of distribution of buildings. But if we move the if we move the attention on investment, of course, I'm talking about euros a bit less than 50% concern multiple dwellings. Then we have single dwelling. And then in the last position, we have independent dwelling. So investments are actually uh, important for multiple dwellings interventions because they represent approximately one half of the total amount of investment in our country. So if we want to have some numbers, considering that the measure is two years old approximately, we had something like over 35 billion euros as a total investment. The monthly growth average is equal to 33 billion euros. And the investment growth in June was equal to 4,6 billion euros, which, was, which is actually the highest uh, um, investment growth in one month. In June, we registered something like more than 26,000 interventions in the country. With the total number of interventions since the measure um, began, uh, less than 200,000 interventions. 
this is quite important, I think, because if we remember, and I said that super bonds represent less than 1% in terms of energy saving, I said that at the end of December 2020, we had something like 1,600 interventions after one, let's say, less than one semester. Look here, we have 200,000 interventions. So the, total, the situation is totally changed. And it is very important to uh, wait until we have the new data at the end of the year to compare what we read in this, la in this last one year. This is just the distribution of the interventions in Italy with the number of asseverazioni. Asseverazioni is the technical document uh, uh, technicians need to fulfill to access the measure. And they do it uh, using um, uh, the technical the technic uh, website we have developed uh, in AIA. And just to have an idea of the distribution, the first rank belongs to Lombardia in the north of the country. Then we have Veneto, another region in the north of the country, and then Lazio. Uh, this was the last slide. Thank you for your time. And of course, I will be. Oh, I'm afraid Miss Allegrini just accidentally left the call. Uh, I don't know if it's just me that I don't see her anymore, or anyone can give me a feedback. Is she still in the call? No, not really. Oh, she accidentally uh, exited the call. Well, uh, and that was very interesting. I, I, I have a few questions already, and um, I hope she will be back in the call. And... Um, uh, we already have some collecting some questions, uh, but uh, while we wait for her to be back in the call, I'm happy to give the floor to, to Matteo Leonardi from ECHO. As I said, ECHO is a think tank uh, and um, in, in, based in Italy. He's the, the co-founder and, and the executive director of, uh, of uh, for national politics uh, there at, at ECHO. And uh, well, I mean, um, Ms. Allegrini didn't get to, to, to explain a little bit how it really works in terms of um, uh, financially speaking for the end users, I mean, how it comes that, that how it happens that, uh, oh, she's back now, and how it happens that uh, um, a tax rebate, a tax um, uh, deduction becomes an upfront cost uh, uh, for the end users. I don't know, if, uh, Matteo, if you plan to, to cover that, but it would be good if you can just okay, mention a couple of uh, a couple of words on how the me mechanism works, uh, because I think it's very peculiar and very innovative. I mean, because it basically transforms what is a potential discount in ten years into the up and upfront cost, and it was partly the secret of the success of this measure. Uh, welcome back, Miss Allegrini. We're, we're already collecting some some, yeah, some questions so for you. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I hope um, that the presentation was ready and live until the end of the presentation, until I said, yes, thank you for the attention. No, no, thank, no so it was- Thank you for the attention, I apologize, of course. No, okay, no, thanks, I'm, it was I'm very here. clear. It was very clear. Thanks for, thanks for being back in the call. We'll take some questions and come back to you uh, right after the, 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 inter the intervention of Matteo Leonardi, to whom I leave the floor right away. Thank you again. Yes, thank you very much uh, for all of you and for the formal presentation, which uh, has nicely illustrated the, the, the technical mechanism and some of the preliminary results of the super bonus. Um, I hope you can see my presentation now. Yes, we can. And you can I'm go trying now to have it in full screen. And hopefully now you have it at full screen. Um, good afternoon, Matteo Nardi from ECHO. Um, just a, a couple of preliminary uh, comments before starting the presentation itself. Uh, going back to your question, uh, um, uh, if, if the, super bon the Italian super bonus can be of inspiration uh, to other countries, I think the answer is surely yes. Uh, as you said, and you have already mentioned uh, in uh, your introduction, I think the super bonus is able uh, to, to, to include a number of mechanisms that uh, uh, are able to overcome some of main barriers uh, uh, to energy efficiency in buildings, uh, including, uh, as you said, uh, um, David, before, 
the tenant uh, landlord uh, uh, issue and the availability of capital for uh, uh, investment uh, in households, uh, uh, which is uh, an increasingly problematic issue, especially in the times of crisis after COVID and after uh, and during during uh, the current uh, war uh, context. Uh, so uh, it is important uh, to say and to state that the eco bonus or the super bonus has a value and uh, has a, a longer uh, history and experience uh, that uh, should be used uh, as a model uh, for other countries uh, and also for Italy uh, to have in place permanent facility to incentive energy efficiency in uh, private buildings. As uh, Ms. Allegrini said before, uh, you have to start uh, with the consideration that uh, over 60% of Italian buildings uh, have been built before the 70s and therefore you necessarily need something structural in order to address those circumstances. Uh, let me try to... Uh, uh, so having said that, so we need to protect the idea of super bonus and we need to take example and we need to improve the super bonus and to make it a permanent facility. Nevertheless, you cannot abstain from uh, uh, make some criticism. And the criticism are very important in order to improve. Uh, and the criticism are also important in order to avoid the current debate on the super bonus, which has become uh, completely political and uh, is not able to work necessarily on the technical failure of the eco bonus and has become a contest of political uh, party, which is not very helpful uh, for uh, the design and the improvement of the mechanism. Well, for sure, I can start uh, with uh, the first statement. The super bonus is too expensive, it's too costly. But it is too costly, as you may have imagined from the presentation of uh, Allegrini, because it has to compete with other non-conditional fiscal rebate mechanisms. So if you have noticed in the, in the previous presentation, in Italy we have in place a tax rebate mechanism that already gives you back 50% of the restoration cost without conditionalities. So whatever refurbishment work you do in your house, get already a very generous rebate mechanism. In order to incentive energy efficiency, therefore, if you want your measure to have effect, also because this measure implies more technical bureaucracy and a better qualified expertise, you necessarily need to increase further the incentive. The cost of the energy efficiency incentive though should not be the total of the rebate, but the difference compared to the other incentive mechanisms which are in place. And in particular, the bonus casa and the bonus facciata are a very strong competitor with any efficiency measure. If you don't remove those incentives, you necessarily need to spend double on energy efficiency. So this is a, a first a reason why the super bonus is so costly. It has to be costly because there are other incentive mechanisms that compete with energy efficiency. If you don't remove those mechanisms necessarily, you need to pour more money in order to incentive energy efficiency. Then it is too costly for sure as compared to the poor energy efficiency uh, goals and target that it wants to achieve. Um, as you have uh, seen, uh, you get a 110% rebate. So you are paid more than you have uh, to, to spend in terms uh, of investment, uh, 110%, if you all increase uh, two energy efficiency classes, which is uh, a target to increase uh, two energy efficiency uh, classes. But uh, is this uh, achievement, is this target proportional to a cost, to a public cost of 110%? To a public cost of 110% uh, 
that does not differentiate in consideration of the income of the family in the households where you are doing your intervention. So you are increasing, you are just asking an ordinary energy efficiency target just to increase two classes in a building a context where 70% of your buildings belongs to the lower energy classes. And you are stocking capital in buildings that will not be touched for the next 20, 30 years. And you are just increasing for a cost of 110% to energy efficiency classes. So again, it is too costly compared to the ambition you have put in the mechanism, which is not to say that you should not increase to classes, but that you are paying too much for this target. Then it has weak conditionalities in the solution and the technologies which are allowed in the mechanism. To start with the gas boiler, again, there is nothing wrong in absolute terms to change a gas boiler with a more efficient one. It is surely wrong to pay this operation with public money 110% because you are incentivizing a technology that is there since the beginning of heating in the households. You incentive a technology that does not need any incentive. You incentive a technology which anyway uses fossil fuel and therefore is in contradiction with the technology development that you need to incentive with public money in order to sort out and to face the challenge of decarbonizing the building at household level. So there is nothing wrong with changing a gas boiler with a new gas boiler. What is wrong is to pay this with 110% from public money. And the heat pumps, as you have seen, are a very marginal sector that has benefit from the super bonus. No wonder because a new technology sector need incentive in order to compete with established technologies. If you allow the established technologies to access the same incentive level, you will have no motivation for industries. You will have no motivation for technician. You will have no trust from a final consumers. So why trusting in new technologies? if the old one is incentive as much as the new one. So again, it is too costly because it directs resources, a higher level of resources to technologies which should not be allowed to access incentive. It is too costly because uh, at the beginning, now they have reshaped, uh, but not sorted out the issue of the timing. So there is no vision. This incentive is very high without a vision. So the financial cover of this mechanism is for one year, then two years, then it has been extended, then it has been uh, cut, then it has been differentiated for a kind of buildings. This has created an inflation on the technologies, and this has created also an environment where uh, getting around the rules is something uh, that uh, you need to do in order to, uh, to respect uh, the deadlines uh, that uh, keep changing. So it is very important uh, when you design such a mechanism to give a long-term vision that says, uh, we are giving you 110%, but just for a limited time, and then uh, the, the, the incentive is decreasing, uh, uh, and we are ending up in this situation in a 10 years period. Whereas here, Italy has just poured an incredible amount of resources without linking those resources with a vision, with a strategy for overall uh, building sector. Uh, another important uh, point uh, that the mechanism has not been efficient uh, in dealing with 
is the lack of a specific budget, a protected area for the social housing. This is a, a key point, especially in the current circumstances, whereas the social housing are at this, in the same basket of private dwellings of better off and uh, uh, well-off people. Uh, whereas, whereas the dynamics into the social housing are different and the needs into the social housing are different and the cost in the social housing are different and it would have been appropriate to have a special area a special design a special budget for the social housing to to end i think another main failure of the current design is that it has no coherence with the overall energy taxation rules so uh, if you look at the design of the tariffs, you see that there are relevant fiscal differences between the electricity and gas product in the domestic sector. If, you, if we go in the next, to the next slide on an exercise that we have done on the first, uh, first semester, and first uh, quarter of 2021, so uh, not considering the current uh, impact uh, on gas prices on final tariffs, you can clearly see how the gas tariff is charged less than half uh, compared to electricity tariffs in fiscal components and environmental charges. So in the domestic level, the gas supply pays some 130 euro per gigaton, whereas uh, here uh, we, in the electricity, you pay, pay some 300. So what does it mean? It means that uh, some of the most efficient solutions, uh, such as the heat pumps, which are not favored by the incentives mechanism, they also have to face uh, an important barrier on the fiscal structure of energy products tariff. Because here, as boiler to heat pumps, you face, you, you face a tariff which has more than two times and a half higher fiscal and environmental component. Uh, I don't want to take too much time uh, for the presentation, uh, but just maybe to let you know that uh, as ECHO, we have started uh, to work on a proposal. Uh, in order to have a permanent um, tax rebate mechanism in the fiscal in the Italian fiscal rule, as it somehow it is already, but it is it is not harmonized with the climate targets, with the need of decarbonizing the buildings, with the need of making energy efficiency more attractive than ordinary renovation, um, and uh, in increasing conditionalities. We have done uh, some exercise uh, in order uh, uh, to uh, compare the mechanism that we want to propose uh, with, the, with the financial resources uh, uh, from uh, uh, the state. And uh, we have calculated a need of uh, some 4 billion per year in the next decade uh, in order uh, to achieve uh, a target of uh, nearly zero uh, emission building uh, uh, by 2050. So uh, I, I do not want to get into the detail of our proposal at the moment, uh, but uh, what uh, uh, we suggest is to have a permanent facility being able to erogate some 4 billion per year in the next decade in order to have this uh, net zero uh, target by 2050. And to have uh, other mechanism for uh, public buildings, uh, for social housing, uh, uh, for uh, schools, uh, uh, for uh, uh, niche energy efficiency market that still can be used uh, as a, a niche uh, area where to promote a solution, where to promote uh, the formation of technicians, where to start uh, 
pushing uh, the introduction of technologies uh, that currently face uh, technical and expertise barriers. Um, I think I'm at the end of my presentation uh, and thanks for the time you dedicate. Thanks a lot, Matteo. Thanks a lot. It was very clear. So if I understand correctly, your solution from ECHO is the one of having a revolving fund as, as opposed to the grant system that is now um, in place. And um, it, it is to keep, sorry, it is to keep the, 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 the current uh, rebate mechanism for uh, private bailings with improvement, with more, uh, with higher conditionalities, and then to develop a revolving fund for specific niche area, especially in uh, the public building sector. Very clear. Thanks a lot. So I have a few questions, and we have we are running out of time, but I, mean, I will stay a bit longer for those who can stay because I think it deserves to to at least to to to, to reply to the, the main questions. I mean, I'll start for the last one. It says this uh, one of the last one is the the it is for Miss. Uh, Legrini, the securization of tax credits derived from the bonus seems to me a very interesting tool. How does this work? So my understanding here is that we might want to go through a little bit better on, on Ms. Allegrini on the difference between cessione uh, del credito, sconto fattura, and uh, so meaning how you transform a fiscal rebate into an upfront cost, because probably this is uh, uh, one of the key assets of this measure. Yes, uh, yes, of course. Um, so uh, we have these uh, three options in 110% and actually in other mechanisms, uh, just to be, uh, you know, precise. So tax relief means, of course, that you, for example, you have an expense equal to 1,000 euro. 110% means 1,100 euro. And of course, you share this amount uh, divided in five or four years. This is a long explanation, let's say about five or four years and the consumer recover directly from the tax relief. This is the first option. Then we have um, the so-called invoice discounting. So we have an expense, for example, equal to 1,000 euro. In this case, the installer or the, the companies, let's say, apply a direct discount on the amount of expense, 1,000, you can apply a maximum discount of 110%, so um, 1,000. It means that the installer or the company receives this 1,000 in the so-called fiscal, uh, in, the, in the personal fiscal amount of the company, and they recover with a fiscal agency in four or five years. Then we have the third option, it means in this case that it's not the installer, for example, who is applying the discount, the discount directly to the consumer, but in this case, we need, for example, a bank. In this case, the bank recover the percentage in four or five years with a fiscal agency. So the consumer pays less, and uh, in this case, the consumer does not uh, recover in his or her tax relief. Okay, thanks a lot. So, I mean, the, the, the mechanism is, uh, the winning mechanism is that, that your tax relief can be given to someone else, either the installer yes. or a bank, and then therefore you don't have to pay in the end because yes. uh, because it's kind Let's of... Let's say you pay less. Let's you, say pay, you, pay you, less. You, pay, you pay less, uh, um, and then you can have like a strong discount, uh, theoretically up to 100% in, in your from the upfront cost, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you, and you will then... Which is also why uh, an owner that is not benefiting from any energy savings in the bills can be interested in, in investing in, in, in his, um, in his uh, apartment or his house, even if it's rented, because it, it will see yes. that the, the value yes. of, the, of the house to increase and he doesn't have or she doesn't have to spend the money because with this mechanism, there's no upfront money to be put in case. I mean, if, if one doesn't want to, OK, you don't have to invest yourself. You will just use your tax credit and give it to someone else. And if I can add just uh, one thing um, about these uh, different options. Of course, when you when you pay taxes, of course, you can you have the three different options because you have an amount of tax um, you need to pay every year. And of course, you can you can choose uh, among the three options. But in case there is um, somebody who pays 
um, a small amount of taxes. And this amount is not enough to recover the amount of expenses in four or five years. In those cases, the um, involved discounting or the credit assignment play a key role because they can, um, let's say, donate in somehow, uh, they can give their the fiscal storage to somebody else. So this is important for those people who do not pay um, a, a large amount, a large quantity of taxes every year. In this sense, I think it is very important to have the three, the two options because the tax relief in that case is not that effective, I say. Very clear. Um, we also have a question about what kind of measures are asked by the citizens for the social super bonus? What kind of interventions are there? I mean, and uh, are, yes, oh, okay. the kind of intervention, are, uh, what are the most popular ones? So, of course, uh, the primary works are mandatory. We have an exception, but when we do not talk about exceptions. Let's say primary works are mandatory. So, of course, I'd say um, cladding for open enclosures are the most common if we compare um, the, the possibilities for the primary works. If we move the attention to the secondary works, I'd say a replacement of existing windows, because of course the, 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 the starting point is to act on the, uh, on the enclosures, transparent and opaque enclosures, because we want to decrease the energy uh, heat transfer from the building up to the external areas. So um, replacement of existing windows. And then I'd say when we when I talked about single heating plants, single systems, in those um, in, in this sense, I'd say condensing heat boiler and heat pumps. Okay. So I mean, would you say more more condensing gas boilers or more heat pumps? At the, at the moment, I mean, for, if we consider the results we had last year, condensing heat plants were uh, reached a higher number in terms of number of installation than heat pumps. And is the amount of boiler, I'm also reading from the questions, is the amount of, of uh, tax rebate and therefore the incentive, is it different from, from gas boilers or to, or to heat pumps or is it the same amount? It's always the same, right? Like 110%? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's always 110%. But... I would say, but in this case, yes, if we think about 110%, we have always the same percentage. But if we, uh, if we, if you remember, uh, we have talked about uh, bonus, uh, bonus cars and, and eco bonds. Actually, these two um, fiscal incentives cover also condensing heat boilers and heat pumps. In those cases, for example, um, if we focus the attention on heat pumps, in bonus casa, uh, we have new installation of heat pumps, which are not, um, which is, which is not a possible solution for eco bonus. I mean, 50, 85 percent, because in that case, we need the replacement of the existing heating plant. Mm -hmm. So, um, I want to say that yes, condensing um, is quite huge for the super bonus, but if we consider bonus casa, heat pumps represent a very uh, high quantity of the number of installations. But that, new, yeah, that that, that and for those who are not familiar with Italian uh, building stock, I mean, th these would also refer to all those buildings in the south of Italy that don't have any hydronic system for for heating. Those who are don't have any mostly typical so, yeah. So I mean, th in those cases, you would not have the chance to substitute anything, and therefore you would just go for the lower bonus casa. If I'm if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, yes. What I want to underline is that, of course, heat pump. The idea of the incentives is to um, give access in when we are talking about heating plants. So actually, cooling plants are not recovered, for example, in the eco bonus. Right. But of course, if we think about the south of the country, where of course the climate is quite uh, hot, of course, then in that case, we don't have the replacement of existing heating plants, as you have already said. And in those cases, we have new installation of heat pumps for heating and cooling uh, purposes, of course. And they represent a large, um, let's say, number of installations, mostly, I'd say, air-air combination. Yeah. Because, of course, because of the ease of use and the use, ease of installation, of course. Right. Um, so I have a question from Ms. Lene from Portugal, but I think you have already replied to this. Is there a hierarchy within the support, uh, for example, greater support for passive measures and then active and then the energy production? I would say that what you mentioned between primary primary uh, measures and secondary measures clearly gives, a, clearly gives a priority in terms of what has to be there 
compulsory and what can be there, but it's not, not necessarily. Yes, uh, primary is always compulsory. Yes, we have that exception, as I said, but it's not, uh, you know, the focus of the topic today, but mandatory uh, primary works are mandatory. So we are talking about enclosures, heating plants and seismic uh, interventions. Seismic interventions for the moment, I'd say just for the moment, um, are not part of the um, research and monitoring we are having in the national agency. Uh, there is a decree which says that we need to monitor also those data, but for the moment um, we are monitoring the energy efficiency actions. So primary works with energy efficiency and all the secondary works with um, related with energy efficiency, of course. Matteo, we have a couple of questions for you, based mostly on what's happening in the market due to this uh, measure. Uh, one question asks um, whether companies that try to take advantage by inflating prices, how uh, is there a way to avoid speculation? And also another question, uh, I take this together, um, is there a risk that the growth in heat pump installation will slow down? when the super bonus ends for single dwellings? Well, uh, yes, there has been a speculation, but the speculation uh, which always comes uh, when you have an incentive uh, is a severe if the incentive uh, is not well designed. So if you just announce uh, a very high incentive for a very limited period of time, and you ex if you exceed this period of time, you don't get you get zero. <laughs> you understand that, that the supplier they dictate the price. Um, so it is important, as we said before, when you design this mechanism to give a vision and the long term planning, so that uh, when I face a supplier that asks me too high, I know that if I wait three years. Uh, nothing happens <laughs> and the price uh, will go down uh, and the speculation uh, uh, will uh, slow uh, down. Uh, so this is an imp a very important uh, feature of the mechanism, but this can only, you can only announce a long-term uh, mechanism if you are able uh, at the same time, uh, especially in a country such Italy with a very high public debt, to find and to link the mechanism with the fiscal coverage. Mm. So uh, those are uh, uh, components that uh, have to be uh, considered all together. Uh, if you have a short incentive with very high premium, inevitably, inevitably, you have speculation by the suppliers. But we have another question on this point, Matteo, which says, uh, that says, um... Uh, the estimated cost, why do you say they are so expensive? Uh, the estimated cost for all bonuses for the state are net of benefits such as higher tax revenues, VAT, lower tax evasion, etc. Recovery of the construction industry and the resulting multiplier effect. Is that so? So, I mean, the, the story goes, I mean, that, that if even if there's a lot of money being poured in, the sort of fallout positive effects on the economy kind of compensate or overcompensate or undercompensate. I don't know, it's a question I'm, I'm asking to you following what uh, this uh, attendee asks, uh, kind of compensate to some extent the, the amount of money that's been poured in the, in the measure. Is this working like this, according to you? It compensates, uh, it compensates uh, a percentage of the cost of your facing. And uh, if you take uh, all variables into consideration, again, tax evasion, uh, it is a problem, but not necessarily the mechanism to promote energy efficiency can at the same time uh, give you a solution for tax evasion. So uh, the bonus casa, which is uh, the tax rebate mechanism that gives you back 50% without no conditionality. And has, of course, so some energy efficiency impact, uh, as Elena has, uh, has uh, said before, because when you, when, you, when you do some renovation works in your house, uh, anyhow, you are improving some house energy efficiency. So this mechanism, at the cost of those mechanisms, are more uh, for uh, tax evasion or more for uh, promotion of renovation uh, in buildings, so employment, but not uh, for energy efficiency. And uh, mind that uh, 
the cost not only has to include the cost which have not been recovered with VAT, with whatever, which are a large share, but also have to, to consider the distribution of the resources. So the, the resources that have been distributed, net of the income from the states, have been distributed to better off people, not to uh, marginalized or uh, low income households, mainly. So this is another component that you have to take in consideration, net of the benefits, that they are there, but they are not enough. Otherwise, we would have sorted out the problem if uh, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the income from VAT and tax evasion uh, would, uh, uh, would be so, so relevant uh, compared to the costs. We have one last question. We have a question from Thomas, but we have already replied to that one. Tom, Thomas, sorry for that. And, uh, but then we have one last question from Claudio from um, uh, Agora Inigwende. Uh, he says that in Germany, the upfront costs are eliminated but if, with a mix of low interest loans and grants. Why are low interest loans not discussed in Italy? The loans uh, share could be increasing with the income of the homeowner. Uh, it's a question for to both of you. I, I don't. I don't think there are any loans like uh, low interest loans in, in in Italy. Also, because I guess that that, uh, that the interest rates were so low that in in the last years that wouldn't have made a much of a difference. But I mean, um, I don't think there's any loan in in this moment like uh, some sort of green loan or um, something like I that in Italy. In this case, uh, Claudio, the, the colleague from Germany, he's talking about yes, yeah, something like green energy loans or something like that. I'm not sure about this, to be honest. I think maybe some banks can have some specific, let's say, conditions. But, but it's not from the state, it's not anything. Else. I do not think so, but I'm not very sure. I'm not very expert of this topic, but I'm not very sure. At the moment, it's something we do not, uh, when, I, when I say we, I mean the national agency, we are not uh, monitoring something like that. Maybe there are some banks who have some specific mm. conditions for their customers and they have um, special dedicated um, low interest loans with these kind of conditions or for example if you want to buy buildings in very good energy conditions for example you have uh, low you can receive as a consumer loans with more you know with, with very interesting interest but um, i'm not expert on that Thanks. Uh, Matteo, if I understand correctly, it's, it's not a loan. What you have in mind is more rotating funds. So it's something similar, but not, not really a loan. What you have in mind for specific categories in your proposal. Is that so? Uh, it is a financial mechanism. It's not that the loan, uh, as Claudio has put in uh, his question. And I do agree with Claudio. Uh, and again, uh, if the incentive is so high, 110%. It means that you have no ambition to use private capital in leverage to the climate challenge. So if you say that the state, the public is covering 110% of the cost, it means that you are not calling citizens to participate with their private capitals and with their debt and mortgage system to participate to the challenge. But, it, but it's, it's also one positive, if I'm sorry to interrupt, I mean, it's one positive thing of the bonus is that if you don't have the money, you can still participate because the state puts the money for you in this case. I mean, uh, the, the problem is, if I, for, if I understand correctly, your criticism is that the state does not differentiate between people in need and people that are well off. And But, but for those yes. who are in need, they don't have any capital, any equity to, to put in, they can be in, and uh, which is also what one of the reasons why... Um, Yes, but uh, consider, uh, uh, consider uh, a very high level uh, uh, condition uh, that Italy is uh, one uh, of the most uh, indebted country in terms of public debt and one of the least indebted country in terms of private debt. So the Italian citizens, they have money in the bank uh, and the Italian state uh, has a, a very high debt. So how can you justify this in the overall discussion of the Stability Pact and in the overall definition 
of a mechanism at the EU level in order to achieve climate targets. You cannot give up in mobilizing the citizens and their private uh, uh, capital into the challenge. And when you pay 110%, you gave up from the, from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So again, if you direct to the least uh, well off, it makes sense. But also consider that if you make an energy efficiency uh, renovation, you start saving money from the next year. So it is a mechanism where loans work also in the how uh, energy efficiency and savings get into the future. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, uh, but I have to also remind that uh, for some other experiences in other countries, uh, loans work when people have access to loans i mean for, there are many many families and households that cannot have access to hold because they are already indebted they have a mortgage to pay or for some or for whatever reason for yes. many reasons might not be they eligible have weak for, work conditions weak still, work conditions and precarities exactly. but but still there there's a market for that still you can for... you can uh, exactly you can uh, uh, work out a mechanism of loan where uh, the, the, you have public uh, guarantees instead of uh, private guarantees sure. but still who benefits of the measure gives back the money that is saving from energy saving yeah it's a sort of esco mechanism but uh, based on, on on public finance thanks a lot uh to both of you i think it was a very interesting discussion we are like 15 minutes past our time so we we have to close it here thanks a lot to those who were with us today thanks for the question we were very interesting i think it, it might not be the last one uh the last webinar on this specific point or maybe we'll have a, a deep dive in some other countries uh, uh subsidies to see what is uh what is there to, to be you know generalized and taken to the attention of the, uh, the whole of the U european union and uh, but for now we'll We'll stop here and uh, just I'll just remind you that this video will be on YouTube and so you can uh, I will be shared um, and and um, I'll ask the, the, the our guests to share their presentation so we can send it to send them to the participants and uh, and I have nothing else left to just to uh, only to 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 wish you a very nice summer break and and thank you for being with us today goodbye. Thank you again. Thank you all of you. Thank you again. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.